FM is the free group on M3 generators. P is a prime number. And we consider the property completion of the free group, which is a free property group. It deserves this name because an arbitrary mapping of these generators into an arbitrary property groups uniquely extends to a continuous homomorphism. Let R be a subset of this free property group. N of R is the closed normal subgroup generated by R. Then we say that this quotient group is presented by the set of generators X and the set of relators R in the category of property groups. Now, uh, so our aim, uh, now I will try to explain the sufficient condition for such a group to be infinite, found by Gulash and Shafarevich in 64. The initial set setting is property groups, but it works also for discrete groups. Because if you have a presentation for a discrete group, you also have a presentation for its property completion. It's the same presentation. Okay. Uh, F is, now I just simplify notation. And we consider the Zassen house filtration. Well, the fastest way is to explain it is K is a field of P elements. We consider the group algebra and its augmentation ideal. And then the i's term of the filtration consists of all elements which are equal to the identity element modular the i's power of the augmentation ideal. This is a descending chain of invariance of groups. Um, for an element, for a non-identical element of the free property group, its degree is the minimal, well, is such an, is equal to i if this element lies in the i's term, but not in, in the next one. So for an arbitrary non-identical element, you can define its degree. The degree of identity is zero. Hilbert series of R is the sign I assume that for every degree R contains only finitely many elements of that degree, which is not a big deal. It's Gaussian elimination. You always can reduce to that case. Well, um, now, Gold and Shafarevich proved the following formal inequality. Oh. Well, hmm. we have that, we have this group, and we consider its group algebra. It also has fundamental ideal, as any group algebra has. And we can see the, we can consider the graded version of, um, now I, I'm going to define the Hilbert series of this KG, but it is usual to talk about Hilbert series of graded algebras. And this algebra is not graded. But we can make it graded. This is 1 plus the sum of dimension W. W of this group algebra This is a Hilbert series of a filtered algebra. 
Now, Golat and Shifarish prove the following inequality. Well, with some input, they proved a particular case of this inequality, which was enough for their purposes, and in full, it was proved by Wilberg and Rocket. They added just half a page. The inequality is, you take the Hilbert series of Kg, multiply it by 1 minus T plus the Hilbert series of R, divide by 1 minus t, it is greater to equal than 1 minus t. Formally, formally means that if you have two formal infinite series, one of them is greater than another one, greater or equal. If, well, for every, every coefficient of the le on the left is greater or equal than the corresponding coefficient on the right, such a partial order. And they proved that we have this. The proof is very, very straightforward. Now, now we have this. Now suppose that there exists a number t sub zero between zero and one such that this Hilbert series converges at t sub 0 and 1 minus mt0 plus h r now I can write it, it makes sense is negative then what? then this Hilbert series does not converge at t sub 0. Why? I will prove it. Look, suppose that it converges at t sub 0. Then I can put everywhere t sub 0 instead of t. This is negative. This is positive. Uh, Hilbert series is always positive. This is positive. And this is positive. Any objections? <laughs> huh? Okay. Uh, but it implies that G is infinite. Otherwise, it would have been a polynomial. Polynomial can go just everywhere. Now we say that a group satisfies golet shafarevich condition or is golet shafarevich group if it has a presentation which makes it infinite, which satisfies these conditions. Now, let's consider the important particular case. Suppose that I is finite, finitely presented, then there is no question about convergence. Suppose that um, we don't have no elements of degree 1 in R. This is not a big assumption because if you have an element of degree 1, it means that one variable can be expressed by other variables. Naturally, we don't want it. And let us say that the number of relators is less than m squared divided by 4. That's it. The conditions are satisfied. Why? What do we need? We need to find t sub 0 such that well, there is no question of convergence, such that this is negative. The worst case is when they are all uh, quadratic. No elements of degree 1, okay? <coughs> so we have to consider this equation middle school. That there exists a root, well, there exists a t sub 0, that the parabola looks like what? <coughs> Nothing more than the formula. 
um, and in group E groups, uh, the minimal number of generators is kind of dimension of H1, and uh, the number of relators is uh, H2. So sometimes you can find the formulation of Golden Shafarevich condition which relates H1 and H2, but that's a particular case. Okay. Sorry, I, I realize I'm confused about, about the definition of degree. Can you just give some examples of elements of a free group of degree one and degree two? Degree one, huh? yes. I guess the base uh, X one, one, X one, X two, X three. Okay. That's degree one. Okay. It lies in the whole group, but doesn't lie in the commutator subgroup. That's one. Thing. Okay. Or uh, this element of degree two, I can also multiply it by something of. Okay, now let's consider some examples of Golgi variations. And I'm going to talk about counter examples. Initially, Golgi Ferenc groups were thought of as some vehicle for counter examples. Then it became clear that this is more than counter examples. So, can I erase this? Two examples. And we will talk about discrete groups as being Golda Shafarevich if they are perfect completion as Golda Shafarevich. Now, first example. Let X be an oriented, say, compact, hyperbolic, three manifold, gamma is fundamental group. Then Lubotsky noticed, sort of also half a page observation, that for almost all primes, almost all means all but finite domain. It has a subgroup of finite index whose property completion is Golet Shafarevich. Well, it was known since Poincaré that uh, this group is balanced. The number of relators is equal, equal to the number of generators. But then, well, this is not clear. Why would you say that all the relators uh, lie in the second number unclear? Why is the minimum number of generators is greater than four? You see, if, if you have them, it's balanced. You would like, <coughs> if m is greater than 4, then you have it. But why would it be? But if the group is linear, you can play with a commutative ring. So that's the first example. And the uh, yeah. second example, uh, this is what's the 83. Second example, let s be a finite set of primes, not including P. Mm, let us say that it can be, the order is M. And let us consider the maximum rho P extension of rational. Rho P extension means that the Galois group is rho P group. Unredefined outside of S. And then the Galois group of this extension, of course it is a proper group, as a proper group, it has the following presentation M generators and M relators, all of them, all of this type, uh, some piece power of uh, generator is equal to some commutator involving the same generator with some element A. And this is the result due to Shafarevich. I think 72. Well, it is clear that all relators are not of degree, at least of degree 2. Piece power is commutators. And there are M of them. So if 
n is greater than 4, then to the null of Shafarevich. And this so far, this is the only way to prove that it is infinite. And uh, this is arguably the most important group in algebraic number theory. We are the Langlands correspondence. Also, this is a pure existence theory. Practically, for, except for very small cases. This, is, this power is not known, these elements are not known. Well, so these two examples. Now let us discuss these examples. Speaking of the first one, um, it is related, I want to mention, to the following open problem, positive Betty number conjecture. That, well, in group theoretic terms, it means that gamma has a subgroup of finite index with infinite abelianization. Very well-known conjecture, which is attributed some, by some people to Thurston, by another people to Waldhausen. Well, and it is widely open. Uh, well, now, one of the implications, if you believe that positive better number conjecture, would be that this group does not have property tau. Yesterday, I talked about property T. And uh, Margulis theorem says that if a group, a residual finite group, has property T, then if you consider all finite homomorphic images and their Kelly graphs, it's an expander family. Lubotsky and Zimmer called it property tau, tau small t. Property t implies tau, the reverse is not true. So property tau means that if you consider all finite homomorphic images, you get an expander family. Now, if you believe the positive beta number conjecture, it would imply that this group does not have property tau. Why? Positive beta number conjecture is that gamma has a subgroup of finite index which can be subjectively mapped onto infinite sigma group, infinite abelianization. It is easy to show that once you have a subgroup of finite index, either both do have property tau or both do not have property tau. If this group has property tau, so this group would have property tau. But and property tau from the way it is formulated, since it involves all finite homomorphic images, it is inherited by homomorphic images. That would mean that infinite cyclic group has property tau, but it is very easy to see that it does not. You can see that there are not many finite homomorphic images, but they are enough to see that it does not have property tau. So, uh, well, so we will scan Cernak. formulated the conjecture that gamma does not have property tau. Initially, they thought about it this way that, well, maybe it would be easier to do and that would somehow give some new ideas. Later, Mark Lackenby showed that in many important cases, Lubotsky said no tau implies positive Betty number, in particular in all arithmetic cases. Well, but the problem is open. Now, I mentioned that practically this gun is a Golas Shafarevich group. So, inspired by that, Lubotsky and myself we formulated a conjecture that every Golas Shafarevich group does not have property tau. In 2004, there was a year of uh, this subject at the Institute for Advanced Studies that really had a huge effect on the subject. All the results that I talked about yesterday, more or less, 
appeared during that year or was started during that year. And then here, Mikhail Yashov, I mentioned him yesterday, showed that this is unfortunately not the case. They exist groups, Golash Frevich groups, with property Tau. And he did it in a very strong way, so I will mention his result in form because it's of independent interest. I will keep this, this, I want to keep this. Ah. There was a series of works, some by Yershov, some by Yershov and Haiken, joint works. This result is due to Yershov, but it is based on the work of Yershov Haiken that I mentioned yesterday. Every Golash Shafarevich group has an infinite homomorphic image with property T. <coughs> of course, <coughs> um, and the homomorphic image is also Golash Shafarevich and and it is Golden Shafarevich. So they exist Golden Shafarevich groups even with property T. Now the idea of the proof. So there exists a Golden Shafarevich group? Every Golden Shafarevich group has an infinite homomorphic image, which is also Golden Shafarevich, and which has property T. The idea of the proof. You see, this is a Golash Shafarevich condition. What happens if you find another subset T, T sub zero is fixed. Suppose that you found another subset such that this is small. In a way, this is a price that you pay for the relators are prime. Suppose that for an arbitrary, for a very small epsilon, you manage to find the system of relators. How small is epsilon? We'll talk later. You have found a very cheap system of relators, are prime cheap in this sense. Then, instead of considering the R, you can add these relators. What will happen? Well, you have to add also plus h r prime of t0, which is less than epsilon. So initially, you can find epsilon such that if you add it, it is still negative. You always can find such epsilon. And uh, try to find some r prime which costs less than epsilon. And then when you add it, it is still a college of but it is a homomorphic image of the group, right? So the idea, it didn't originate in this work, it has some history. Uh, find a system of relators that would give you property T, such that this group has property T, and which costs arbitrarily small. Then you are done, because you can edit. Yesterday, I mentioned the result that the elementary group of an arbitrary uh, finitely generated associative ring has uh, property T and I mentioned the Steinberg groups and some Steinberg type groups also have property T. One of this Stein, some of these Steinberg type groups cost a bit really little. So, sorry, I mean, the, the groups X are prime, those are already kind of examples to your conjecture, right? Uh, yes, that, that is an example of my conjecture, but it, yes, uh, it's, it was only a counter example to my conjecture. It was, not, it was not known at the time, actually. No, it was known at the, not known at the time. You needed more examples of groups with property T. Before that theorem, and the paper appeared in 2009, right? But, 
if you found counterexamples which cost arbitrarily little, then we can say that every uh, Volochefarevich group has such a homomorphic image. And that was the answer to another open problem due to Vershek and their hardware. They asked if a Volochefarevich group can be amenable. No, it can. Because it has a homomorphic image with property T. Both amenability and property T are inherited by homomorphic images. And they are kind of contradict each other, at least for infinite groups. Uh, then there was another there were another applications of this method. So that's enough. But if this problem is open. Now I want to talk about the second group. There is a very, very well-known problem, conjecture due to Mazur and Fontaine, which says that this group... Which groups are not finitely presented, right? Which groups? Mm -hmm. No. Ah, uh, then they can be finitely presented, yes. But not balanced. So huh? Not balanced. So this, uh, this not balanced. No. Very finitely presented. Is it a kind of small cancellation argument, or...? To do what? No, it's not the, to, to, to find is our prime. To find our prime? No. The argument is that they just found this. After they found a large family of groups with property T, they looked at their presentations and some of them, fortunately. Put the for balance presentations, you can do Yes, it's more than for generators. Yeah, but. Uh, now, about this group. There is a famous Fontaine measure conjecture in number theory, which says that this group is sort of strongly non linear. Whenever you consider a homomorphism, you remember my example one of yesterday. I talked about congruence subgroups. Lambda was a local commutative complete Noetherian ring with a maximum ideal M whose quotient is a finite field of characteristic P. Think of it as PNF images. If you don't like this very long phrase, Lambda is And uh, we consider with this homomorphism of property groups, and the conjecture says that the image is finite. Very important conjecture. Well, uh, about 10 years ago, Nigel Boston. Post a stronger version of this conjecture. Even this is not known, but he conjectured, he conjectured something stronger. Uh, he, pro he conjectured that, you know, if you look at this group, every just infinite homomorphic image, just infinite means that this group is infinite, but every proper homomorphic image is finite. So he conjectured that every just infinite homomorphic image is a group of Grigorchuk type, if you know what it is. You know, Grigorchuk and others constructed uh, families of uh, uh, groups acting in trees with various interesting properties. And he conjectured that this is the case and did a lot of computer experiments which sort of confront this conjecture. And of course it implies. So the Grigorchuk type of intermediate growth or something? Is no. Uh, Grigorchuk groups are kind of fractal groups. They are also called the every uh, neighborhood subgroups of finite index are direct sums, isomorphic to direct, uh, finite direct sums of the whole group. So they look at the whole group. One of them is of intermediate growth. So Boston, it was a <coughs> Strong destruction of Fontaine Mazur conjecture. And again, Yershoff and Hacking used the same arguments to refute it. They proved 
Henry Gold Shukarevich group has a homomorphic image which is hereditary just infinite. <laughs> hereditary just infinite means that every subgroup of finite index is also just infinite. In general, this is not the case. A group may be just infinite, but uh, a subgroup of finite index is not. And they proved by, by much the same idea, the same idea, that every Golich of an image group has a just infinite, um, has a homomorphic image which is hereditary just infinite. And that was it. Because um, groups of Grigorchuk type are not hereditary just infinite. As I said before, subgroup of finite index is isomorphic to a direct copy of several copies of the original group, not just infinite. Well, and I want in this series of works of Yershov and Hiking, I want to mention another work which is related to Tarski and Shansky monsters. I want to keep from 10 meters because I will come back to it. I will erase this. In 83, if I'm wrong, then Mark will correct me. I first constructed uh, Tarski monster. I never could understand why I constructed it, but it is Tarski monster. Tarski asked this question. Hmm? Tarski asked this question. Yes, it's like with elementary particles. Elementary particles are called by people who conjecture that they exist, not people who found it. Uh, for sufficiently large primes, a group G such that every proper subgroup is a sickly group of order P. So in particular, it follows that this group is too generated and satisfies this law, an interesting group, Tarski monster. But it is clear that a Tarski monster can be residually finite. <laughs> so the shop and Hiking constructed a residually finite version of Tarski monster. For all primes, not only sufficiently large, they constructed a group with the following property. Every proper finitely generated subgroup is either finite or of finite index. That is the same flavor. Um, how did they construct it? And why this condition is restricted to finitely generated subgroups? On one hand, I'm pretty sure, though it is not known, that such things do not exist if you wanted to do for all subgroups. One can formulate similar questions for associative algebras, Lie algebras, they can prove that. Unless you restrict yourself to finitely generated, they do not exist. And how does finitely generated help? There are countably many finitely generated subgroups. And you kind of get a condition separately for each one. And for each one you find this R prime. And you add epsilon, small, small, the size of the sum is small. By the way, they had to generalize slightly the notion of College of Arevich, weighted general College of Arevich. In this definition, I basically assign weight T sub zero to every generator. You can vary, you can assign, assign different weights to different generators, such that the inequality still hold. And this is a more general class of groups. And they proved it for this weight of Golich of H, but for their proof, for their proof it's very important. Because each time when they pass the new homomorphic images, they had to change weights. 
Okay. Any questions so far? This was again due to Ershad and Harkin? Yes. Okay. Not published in this yet. Ah, so yes. if it is equal to 2, then? Yeah. So it's a square root here. Forever it does matter. Now, speaking of Golashifarevich groups, I proved them in the year 2000, though in fact earlier that it was published in the year 2000, that Golashifarevich groups are not only infinite, but they contain non-abelian free property groups. Very, very infinite. And speaking, coming back to Fontaine Mazur, it was, uh, well, nothing, very little is known. In fact, it is known, it is not known in full if this group is linear or not. If it can be embedded into such a group. Even that is not known. It was asked the question by Boston and Mazur. Uh, that brings me to the question of identities. outstanding mathematician published a very compli technically complicated paper with the proof of the following theory that if you consider a free non associate a free associative algebra, not polynomial, so, so polynomials in non-commuting variables, it is not embeddable in, in matrices over some community field. He likely didn't like to include it in his list of publications because number will give you the proof. But that was done before even such words were used. Polynomial identity. Uh, there exists an element, a non-zero element of the free associative algebra. Such that is identically zero on this algebra. Substitute anything. And you will get zero. Why? Well, let us say that F should be multilinear. And skew symmetric. in n squared plus 1 variables. Well, more, more is known about these identities, but they take the trivial case. Then it is identically zero. You understand why? Because, you know, since it's multilinear, lambda is not important. It's could be all the field. And you always can take basic elements. And there are n-squared basic elements. And this is Q-symmetric and n-squared plus one variables. So it has to be zero. And to find this element, for example, uh, n-squared plus one y's, mm, n-squared over all permutations of the symmetric group and square plus one variables. That's it. Hmm? There's too many variables, but it's okay. It's square, square plus two. You, you don't know you don't need the exit, just you take the determinant and fully still okay. Who's that? Uh, this thing is uh, the thing has uh Ah you mean that I did not give this? You don't need the axis here. Right? Mm -hmm. Why do you need the axis? Yeah. I don't need Texas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. More general. It's a standard identity. Yeah. Okay. 
But so that there was a proof. If it is identically zero here, it is certainly not identically zero here. Now I will formulate the theorem. Well, there exists a series of non-identical elements, well, in the three property group, with the following property that if P is essentially big, bigger than M, then this group satisfies this identity. Which means that you can substitute arbitrary elements for x, x, y, x2, and so on. Unfortunately, I cannot say this is not effective. And also, the second assertion of this kind is that all identities of this GL, well, lambda, but here I can put just PADK images. Every identity of this group is an identity of that group. Uh, all identities are finitely based. I will explain what it means. Well, in, in particular it means, uh, of course, under this finitely based, under this assumption. In particular, it means that at least for P sufficient to large, this group is not linear. Why? I said before that it contains free property group. And this is PI. It satisfies an identity. Free group doesn't satisfy an identity. Satisfy an identity. Mm. Well, I believe that if you drop this assumption, the first half still is true. The second half certainly is not. And finitely based means the following. If you look at all such elements which are identically called E, it's a verbal subgroup in the free property group. You always can find finitely many elements there, such that all other elements can be obtained by substitutions because you can make substitutions. It's a verbal subgroup. So it's like Hilbert's theorem, finite basis. And I knew this result for quite a few years and didn't publish it for two reasons. First, I was afraid to find myself in the same situation because the proof, it was extremely complicated. Uh, that was the second reason. Uh, now I would say that the proof is reasonable. 60 pages is reasonable. And uh, since nobody so far found an easier way, probably it makes sense. Still, this is very inefficient. Even for two by two matrices, I cannot write down this element as I did here. You don't know what B is for 2 by 2 No. Well, for 2 by 2 I know. This is the result due to Zubkov. For M equal to 2, P has to be just greater than 2. Identities of 2 by 2 matrices radically simpler than identities of other matrices. But even for 2 by 2, it is a pure existence Yes, yes, I cannot write it down. Of course, the question is, what does it mean to write explicitly, explicitly an element of the free property group? It's an infinite product, but in some sense. A rule which will say, how do we get the next element, whatever. A few words on the ideas of the proof. In some, though it sounds strange, but the first part follows from the second part. They come together. Um, 
this question has a long history. It was asked in the 30s by Specht, who is known in the representations of symmetric groups. Is it true that for any associative algebra over a field of zero characteristic, all identities of this algebra, identities while well, explaining what it means, follow from finding a many? That was Specht problem. It was done in 87 by Kevin, a very ingenious proof. Uh, fortunately, I ran that proof very carefully because I was a referee of the paper. And here, we have to consider the dramatic generalization of this result. We have to, in the space of, in the algebra of generic matrices, we have to consider subspaces which are closed with respect to substitutions, but not all substitutions, least substitutions, and show that they are finitely based. How does it help? Because when you consider group elements, you can realize them as infinite series. And you look at the homogeneous components of the minimal degree, and that's a space, and then you, you apply that finitely based theorem to that space. And that gives you everything. Because you start with some element such that the, you, can make, you can kill arbitrary number of the first homogeneous components, but unfortunately not all. So you kill the first ones, then the minimal component has large degree. The space is still finitely based. So it means that as Lie elements, they are still long. And then you find a, an element with the same minimal component, but which lies further in the zassen house filtration. Multiply by the inverse, you kill the minimal degree, repeat the procedure, and so on. And this infinite product converges. But it is hopefully non-efficient. Well, 50 minutes. <laughs> Thank you.